the Lord's got his great, a great word planned out for today. I don't really don't know what it is yet, but he's going to prepare it, and he's doing all the work. Thank you, Jesus, that he's doing it. And so the first verse we're going to talk about today is 1 Peter 1, verse 13. So I'll give you a second to turn to that. I already told these guys, and we're going to be doing communion at the end. Oh, man, so, whew. I mean, lately, lately, I feel like I've been having, God's grace has just been flowing a lot lately, so much that, you know what, I can't even sleep sometimes. I mean, I, it, he's, he's, he talks so much sometimes, it's like at night, and I get so excited, so much full of life, I just can't even, whoa. I, I know it's really, it's the Lord just doing it. It's the Spirit just starting to give life, because there's no way I could find all the things that He shows me in the Bible. It's just, it's too vast and too, too amazing for me to dig out. I, I, you know, it's all about Him. Jesus finished it all at the cross. He finished it for us. You know, that, so He did it so He could, you know, so we could have His righteousness, so we could possess His possession, so we could walk in sonship. And, you know, walk in the Father's love. Walk in His love for us. Amen? So this first verse is, Therefore, gird up the loins of your mind. Be sober and rest your hope fully upon the grace of that is to be brought to you at, at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Okay, so this word, be, to be brought, in the Greek, is actually um, present, passive, present passive. And it's a, it's a Greek word, I have it right here, which is feminiferion, which means being brought. So grace is being brought to you at a re new revelation, at a revelation of Jesus Christ. Grace is being brought. So when you're hearing the gospel, grace is being transferred to you at that moment. It's coming. It's coming, and it's coming to set you free. And we know, how, what, 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 what makes this grace come to us? It's why, why are we so lucky? What, what, what makes us this way? What, what, why, Jake? That's just unmerited favor. Unmerited favor. It's not nothing we did for us. Amen. Amen. Nothing that we did. Yeah. It's all because of his grace. Yeah. Amen. Not because of my performance. My performance can't give me nothing. Amen? Yeah. It's amazing. You know, you know I, t I talk about a lot about looking to Jesus, looking to Jesus. And I think about, man, what am I really explaining to you guys? You know? Because <laughs> you think, uh, you, you, you have real problems. If people have real problems, like, how is Jesus going to help me in this problem? How? How? How am I going to church going to do this? How is this going to happen? You know, how? What, is, what makes Jesus help me now when you didn't help me back then? Amen? Okay. Right? Sometimes, yeah. Sometimes, it's because it's a new, it's about a new revelation. I mean, do you, do you remember whenever the, um, the Israelites, they were in the, they were in the wilderness, and they got bit by snakes, and a snake bite hit their leg, and Moses, he put on that serpent, put a bronze serpent on a cross. He said, look at, the, look, at the, look up here, and you'll be healed, and you'll be alive. But if you look at yourself, they die. You know? It's hard, remember, everything's coming against you. You're like, ah, my, my leg, my leg. You know, that's a real thing. You're, you're, you're life and death right here. I mean, it's like, I'm looking at my leg. I can't look at the cross right now. Amen? And sometimes it's hard. It's hard to look at Jesus. It's hard to look away from the problem. The problems want to scare us into, you know, just keep on looking at them. Keep on looking at them. Because that's the way that the devil knows he can defeat you. Because when you look at Jesus, you know, after the Israelites got out of the land of Egypt, whenever they got three days after they got out of the Red Sea, they got to the bitter waters of Marah. And they were thirsty. I said, oh man, why can't we drink this? Moses, you got us here, we can't even drink the water. Why? What are you, we're going to starve out here? We're going to thirst to death? You know? <laughs> and so, you know, Moses, he's, oh God, these people are always complaining. He's, you know, Lord, I need some help here. Go to the Lord, and the Lord's like, okay, I got something for you. Throw that tree into that water. Throw that tree into the water. When they threw that tree in the water, what, what, what did that represent? That was, that was the cross. You know, that, in that bitter water, that the cross makes everything bad turn for good in your life. Amen. Whenever you see Jesus, he's turning all the evil for good. Amen? That's what happened. He threw a tree. We know Jesus, he was on the cross on the tree. He said, cursed is everyone who hangs on the tree. He became a curse. To reverse it on your life. Because he knew from Adam's first sin, that sin entered and we were cursed from that day. And the only way for him to remove it was to become a curse. 
to remove the curse off our lives so that we can always be blessed. Amen. I really feel some peace coming. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. But you see that that cross, that cross that was, it was something new. They had just got let out of Egypt, you know. The Lord had just delivered the parting waters. I think that would that'd keep me going for a while. I mean, whoa. I, right. Think, right. think about it. Think about it. parting the waters. The Red Sea parted. I still doubt it. And, and think about this. All of their captors died right behind them. Every, it says not one of those, those Egyptians remained. Not one. Wow. You know, right as soon as they got across that Red Sea, they started singing a song. Oh, it's all about Jesus. You know, all about the Lord. There was no I involved. There was no I in the song. It was all about, ooh, I'm dependent. You're my rock. You're my, re you're my refuge. You're my salvation. Woo! Thank you, Lord. Two days later, and they're already complaining again. Because, you know, in, in, in the midst of this, they don't even see that there's a pillar of fire right in front of them, and a pillar of fire behind them, surrounding them with God's grace. Because right as soon as they got out of Egypt, they were in, for 50 days, they were in pure grace. Just like we're under. It's the same, it was the same type of covenant that we're under, that they were under. For 50 days, right before the first day of Pentecost, where they asked for the law. But what's so cool is, you know, 50 days, there's something about numbers. Every number in the Bible has meaning. 50 is the letter none in Hebrew. It has the numeric value of 50, none. None is fish or abundant life. They were having the abundant life the entire time before they got to Mount Sinai and the law was given. All the time. Even every time they complained, you know complaining is a sin. Every time they complained, God blessed them. Every time they complained, it would seem like every time they sinned, grace was abounding. Much more, much more, much more. Amen? Amen? And it wasn't until the law was given that people started dying. They started dying once the law was given because it was based on man's doings. They started, it was all on themselves. Thou shalt not do this, thou shalt not do that, thou shalt not do this. There's a sign over here that says, you know, no fishing. Something in our flesh wants to break the sign. There's nothing wrong with the sign. There's nothing wrong with the flesh. Our flesh wants to go against it. Somebody tells you you can't, oh, you're, you're telling me I can't. I want to do it now. Something about our flesh. Our flesh, in, our, it's, in the Bible it says, our, in our flesh dwells no good thing. Nothing wrong with the law. The law is holy and just. But we can't live by it. Because our flesh, it, it's not for us. It was the, you know what? The, the, the Ten Commandments was used to remove the curse off of our lives. It was the only way that God could impute sin into Jesus, into man. He used it to impute it into Jesus. And he came to that one man to make a new contract. <laughs> you know, I, I really believe that the Lord would never even give the law unless the Israelites, they asked for it. They said, anything that you say, God, we can do it. Oh, man, it's a boast. That's pride. They're, they're having confidence in themselves and saying, instead of saying, thank you, Lord, that you got us out of Egypt. Thank you, Lord, that you've gotten us every way that, you know what, it's been your grace. And it hasn't even been anything that I've had to do. It's all just been your love. I just... I've just been riding the grace wave, amen? You've been taking care of me. Instead, they got there and they were like, I can take care of myself. I don't really need that grace thing. Grace is the gospel. It's been the same gospel over and over throughout all time. You know, it says that the Lamb was slain before the foundation of the world. Jesus was slain. It was, it's been going, you know, it's amazing, Jesus' love. It's, it's really cool. It's really awesome. And the Father's love for you. He's always with us. He's never against us. Whew, I don't know where you're going, Lord, but you're going on track. You're going somewhere, amen? So this first time, they, they, you know what? Three days after that, you know, it rained bread from heaven. You know what Jesus said to the Pharisees? He said, I have that same bread that your fathers ate in the wilderness. I'm that same bread. I'm that bread of heaven. It was a, it was a fresh, new revelation of Christ. Every single time they, they wanted, they were complaining, the Lord gave him a fresh new revelation. Gave him a fresh new revelation. Fresh new revelation. Something fresh to be like, wow, that's Christ. Wow, that's Christ right here. I mean, I mean, I, I heard the whole John three six, John John three sixteen, my whole life. Now with y'all, yeah. Oh man, it's, sometimes it's you get bored. It's like, oh man, this is like the same thing I hear it over and over. It's just the same old revelation of Jesus. You know, whenever you see Jesus, oh man, he was that same Lamb that died in Egypt. The first Passover. On the same day, the 14th. That's the same day Jesus died at the cross. It was the 14th when they killed that Passover lamb. It was a white lamb. 
And you know what? They had to put the blood on the doorposts. Doorposts. And you know, in Hebrew letters, the 22nd letter of the Hebrew alphabet is this, is the doorpost, which represents the cross in Hebrew. 22nd letter represents the cross. So that blood from that lamb and that cross got them free. Wow, it wasn't because of their good behavior. It wasn't because of their good works. It was because of the blood. That's what made the angel of death pass by. It wasn't because of them. It was because of the blood of Jesus. Over and over, time and time again, the Lord's been saying, it's about my son. It's about my son. It's about my son. What is righteousness, guys? Righteousness is right standing with God. Right? Right standing with God? What do you think, Josh? What is righteousness? Righteousness is right standing. It's it's also uh, basically it's perfection. It's not missing the mark. Right, right. Okay. Sin is missing the mark. So anything Sin. other than what righteousness is okay. affects your standing with God. Okay, okay. Righteousness, okay. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Also, you know what? Righteousness is a gift. It's a gift. Yeah. yeah. It's something you have to receive. If I had the winning lottery ticket and I said, here you go, are you, you're a millionaire now. But it's your job to go cash it. Amen? Right? It's still your job to go cash it. You, you, got, you got it right here. All you got to do is take it to the bank. You know what? Sometimes as Christians, you know, we, we forget to go take it to the bank. You know, I, you, you've had righteousness since the first time you believed. But have you stepped into that abundant life that they were having? Every time they wanted something, God supplied it. Every time they needed it, they said, Lord, help us. He supplied. He supplied. He supplied. You know, that, that, how do we possess our possessions, guys? What, it, what is possessing our possessions? What possession is, did the Lord give us? What did he give us? Uh, I have righteousness and abundance of grace. That's right. You know, he did give us righteousness. He did. And his, now, if you're right, exactly right. It's his right standing. Mm -hmm. It's saying that, you know what? Because of Jesus, I have the right to stand right next to Jesus. And you know what? All my sins are put away. They're put away. They're gone. They're put away at the cross. Amen? Well, you know, David was very envious of us. He was very envious of us. He was always, you know, he was like, Blessed is the man that God shall not impute sin. This is Romans 8, or Romans 7. Uh, you know that, um, what, what does it mean, the imputation of sin? What does that mean, guys? Do you know? Uh, so, I guess God imputes sin, or he just who he doesn't see sin on? The imputation of sin is God would impute it into you so he could punish you. In the Old Testament, the law, that's how it would be punished. If you were under the Old Covenant, you had to, if you made one mistake, just like David made, what did he do? He, he killed Uriah. He, had, he committed adultery with Bathsheba. He was punished. It was a tempered mercy punishment, but his, his, his son, through Bathsheba, died. But you know what? That's why he was so envious of us. You know that? Because he know, and he saw a prophetic vision that there was going to be a time where God did not impute sin to someone. And that's us. Because God has our, it, that doesn't mean God has gone soft on sin. He has not. It means that God, in his infinite holiness and wiseness, he sent his son to be the, the substitute, to get all of the sin imputed to him. That way it could be judged on his body. For you. Wow. It's amazing. It's amazing because now all the punishment has already been punished. There's no more judgment for believers because it's already been judged on Christ at the cross. You know, it became a curse to re reverse the curse. Do you know that I, in Romans, let's go to Romans real quick. Let's go to Romans. Let's just, I believe it's Romans chapter 4, verse 24. Verse 23 and 24. Romans chapter 4, verse 23 and 24. So it says, Now it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him, but also for us. It shall be imputed to us who believes in the Lord. Okay, so they're talking about righteousness, okay? If you, um, it goes to the top, let's see um, where it says that. Let's actually go back to Let's go to, actually, Romans chapter, chapter 4, verse 5. Can you read it for me? You, one of you guys want to read it? Chapter 4, verse 5. Chapter 4, 4. verse 5. Uh, yeah, I'll read it. 
Read it for me. Read it loud. Uh, but to him who does not work, but believes on him, who justifies the unrighteous, or the ungodly, the ungodly. his faith is accounted for righteousness. Amen, amen. It says God justifies the ungodly mm -hmm. apart from works. It's not about your works. It comes by faith. It's the same covenant that Abraham had. You know, Abraham never, never did righteousness. All he did was, I believe God. And it was, he was imputed righteousness. That's the same covenant that we're under. It's not based on our works. It's not, you know what, we, I can never work righteousness. And when I do, what, it, what does it mean to work righteousness? What, is, what does that mean? I mean, what, how do we work for it? Uh, you, you, know? just, you don't have to work for righteousness, but faith comes by here. So. Right, yeah, you're right. But I mean, how, some people do work. It's a choice every single day oh, we no, wake oh, up. Oh, work for you know, we, every day we wake up. We wake up, we have a choice to make. We could, yeah, I can live my life today by, um, if I want to get it by my own effort, or I can get it by God's grace. So I want to be, you know, how do I want to do it? It's up to you. You know, we can go out in the day and say, man, whew, I can do it all, my, all on me. Or I can say, you know what? God's grace, he's already supplied it for me. Why am I trying to get it myself when he's already given it? It's not. It, we it, 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 it got to shift the focus. How do we shift the focus? By hearing. Hearing gets us back onto Christ. It gets us back into, oh, it's not what shall I do. It's what has he done. It's not what shall I, it's how he shall supply. He already supplied it through the cross. Everything, righteousness, forgiveness, love, peace, prosperity, healing. Jesus always said, I am. I am. I am your healing. I am anything you need. He is that. Amazing. So it's a righteousness apart from works. And actually, let's go back to verse 24. It says, but also for us, it shall be imputed to us who believe in him, who raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead. That word, um, see, that we believe in him, it, the righteousness that we, okay, who was delivered up for our offenses, 25, because of our offenses, and was raised because of our justification. What day was Jesus raised on, guys? Uh, the 14th day of the song? Or no, the 17th day. 17th day. What does 17 mean? Uh, 17 is victory over all evil. Amen, amen. 17, every number has something meaning. 17 means victory over all evil. Victory over all evil. Jesus rose on the 17th day. And just by because of his resurrection, we were declared righteous. Justification means you were declared righteous because of his justification. Because he was raised. Only because he raised from the dead were we justified. 17, victory over all evil. Y'all want to see some? Okay, now y'all want to see something cool. I know everybody wants to see something cool whenever it comes to numbers. No. Do you remember the day in, in Noah's time in Genesis? The, the 17th day when the flood waters went down was whenever the, mount, the ark rested on Mount Ararat. It was the 17th day. Same thing. It's all about, wow, that, you know, the ark and Jesus are the same. It's in the same thing. That, you know what? That watery justice, that righteous judgment came down on everyone. There was only eight people in the ark. Eight people. Eight means new beginning. A new creation was in the ark. You. We were in that ark. Amen. God shut the door. He slammed you in. And it rested on the 17th day on Mount Ararat. Ararat in Hebrew means the curse has been reversed in Hebrew. That's what it means. Ararat in Hebrew means the curse has been reversed. So on the 17th day, it the ark rested on Mount Ararat. Just like on the 17th day, Jesus rose from the dead. The curse was reversed from our lives. Reversed every curse because of his justification. Because there was, a big, there was the biggest divine transfer. Man, I'm just, whew, I don't know where we're going. I think this is like basics. I mean, back, back all the way to here. I, you know, but it's good, you know, because it's the gospel. Gospel, so, it's so good. Let's go to Romans 8 right quick, you know. So Romans 8 at the end. 17, here's another 17 for you. Romans chapter 8, the end of chapter 8. It says, Paul said, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Tribulation, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, peril, sword. None of those passed down. For I'm persuaded that neither life, nor death, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor anything's present, nor anything to come, nor height, nor depth, nor anything created. That's 17 things. 17. That's 17 right there. Wow. Over all evil. 
17 is victory over all ages. 17 is victory. Amen? Joseph was 17 years old. I mean, every there's always a 17. It's always something. It's a victory. Amen? 17 things right here. The victory shall never separate you from his love. Ever. Isn't that amazing? Right here. If you count all those, 17 in all. It's something about, it's something about victory, guys. Something about his victory at the cross. Uh, and it's seeing him in a new light. Man. You know, this is actually something I was actually going to say, but this is something really, really cool the Lord showed me last night. You, as you all know, I'm sure you know that Joseph in Jesus is a type and shadow. Do you know that? The life of Joseph is a type and shadow of Christ. Do you, okay, so you know, yeah, yeah. Joseph yeah. was the most loved son of his father Jacob, right? Yeah. Joseph, right? Right in Genesis, Genesis. Who's the most loved son of the father? Jesus. Amen. 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 Joseph was rejected by his brothers. Jesus was rejected by his brothers when he came the first time. The Jews rejected him. Same thing. He was cast down to that pit. Jesus went down, okay, for us. He was ready, he was he got brought back into the land of the Gentiles. Just like Jesus, the Jews rejected Jesus and they never wanted to believe that he was a savior. But for for two thousand years, the Gentiles have had Christ in their in their lives. See that? This is something that really, really wowed me. Was that, you know, Joseph was thrown in jail in Egypt. You know? And I'm sure to Pharaoh, right before, you know, what happened to, What happened in here? He was, you know, he would interpret dreams. And he was, he was, he was in jail. And I, I really believe that the Pharaoh probably knew. He, he would throw people in jail. So I'm sure he passed by and saw Joseph. So Joseph, if he's in jail, what would he be like? What would he look like? You don't know? He'd be dirty. <laughs> okay, for one. For one, he's in jail. He had long hair. He would look pretty, pretty disgusting. Pretty not fresh, okay? <laughs> Unfresh. I mean, I mean, in this world, everybody's like, man, I'm fresh. They want to, the Lord made me a little fresh this morning, amen? You know, I mean, this afternoon, you know, he wants us to be fresh, you, you know? You, you know, that's the, that's the saying around the world. Joseph was not fresh, okay? And if he's a type and shadow of Jesus, for so long he's been in this prison, I'm sure the Pharaoh would stop by and see, oh, who's this guy? Who's this man? You know what? Just like us, whenever we, before we ever came to the realization of grace, we saw Jesus and we were like, huh, Jesus. Jesus, you can't help me. I gotta go find my own way to help myself. I know I said that because I never, I never knew what Jesus could do. I never knew. I, you know, I, I thought he was only for, oh, I get that one little card, I go to heaven card. This is my, for my salvation card. Got Jesus for that. Right? I'm sure you thought the same, right? right? I, I'm just going to make sure I'm going to believe in Jesus, okay? I'm going to make sure. I'll leave, most people believe in the world, and you know, we're going to go to save. I'm just going to make sure. I'm going to get my seat on the saved express, okay? <laughs> True? Amen? Amen. Amen. That's what we thought, you know? It, it, it's not true, you know? It's, that's, it's, it's exactly true. But we forget that, you know what? Jesus' name means the Lord saves. He doesn't only save you from eternal thing. He saves you out of every situation. The word salvation is the word soteria. Soteria in the Greek means temporal deliverance out of any danger. Danger right now. Salvation means you're delivered from anything that's happening to you in the now. It does mean eternal salvation in other ways, but it means deliverance now. Amen? I want salvation now. Okay? I, I, I know it's all going to be good in heaven, but I need to be saved today. I need help. Right? I don't know about you. I, I mean... Things come against me, I need help. The easiest way I know is to say, Lord, help me. Amen? Mm -hmm. I and mean, sometimes just crying out, just say, Phew. I don't know, man. Phew. But anyways, um, so Jesus was, I mean, Joseph was in this deal, and you know, the butler actually said, you know, this guy helped me interpret my dream, Pharaoh. Pharaoh was having nightmares. He was having this dream, re reoccurring, 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 reoccurring. And he finally, um, he was like, none of the people in his kingdom could answer this dream. No, none of the wise people done it. So this is a need that the Pharaoh had that no one could meet. No one can interpret. No one can meet this guy's need. No one could, no one could fill, fulfill what this, the Pharaoh needed. The butler remembered this guy Joseph in that cell. He interpreted my dream. Maybe he interpreted yours. Just like whenever I'm talking to you guys, I think Jesus can help you out. I think he can help you with this need. So they brought, you know what they did? They brought Joseph out of jail. 
And what were they? Let's look to see what they did to Joseph as soon as they brought him out. Let's go to um, Genesis real quick. This is going to be cool. This is really neat. Genesis what? Genesis chapter forty. Genesis chapter 41, actually. Chapter 41, verse 12. Now there was a young man, Hebrew man, here with us. Was there, with us there. Okay, he's telling the Pharaoh that he interpreted my dream. Actually dropped down to 14. So Genesis 41, verse 14. Then Pharaoh sent and called Joseph. And they brought him quickly out of the dungeon. And he shaved, his face, he shaved changed his clothing, and came to Pharaoh. What did, you, what did Joseph do again? What did he do? What did he do? What did he do? He shaved. He changed his clothing. He was in jail. I'm sure this guy looked like a hell, okay? I'm sure. I mean, you're in jail for seven years. He was in prison for a long time. A long time. It seems like people just locked him up, threw away the key. He was in there. Just like, I'm sure this guy came out with a beard. He needed to shave. He needed some new clothes. His probably shirt was all the way down to rags. Or he might have not even had a shirt. We know Joseph was always losing his shirt. <laughs> he was, okay, he was always losing his shirt. Potiphar's wife took one, his brothers took the other one. He was shirtless a lot of the time, ladies, okay? Oh, no, 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 okay, 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 but it's true, it's true, okay, okay, it's true, but I mean, anyway, so he, he got cleaned up. That's, that's Jesus in the new revelation. That's seeing Jesus just like the Israelites saw him. There's a cross right there, there's a tree in the water. They, Pharaoh saw a new revelation of Christ, saw him in the new light in grace. Saw that, I need this guy. It's not according to my works. My works can't get this thing fulfilled. My works can't interpret this dream. Only Christ can. See that? I don't know why. I just, I see that. I was just, it's really something I've never seen in the Bible. I've never heard it preached on. Never even heard anything about it. That's a good one. Really? Wow. But Jesus came and he interpreted the dream for Pharaoh. Okay? And what did, what did Pharaoh do for Joseph? Uh, he rewarded him. Yeah, that's right. Because he interpreted the dream, and apparently the dream was that there's going to be seven years of famine, there's going to be seven good years. And he said, We're gonna need, he's, you're going to need somebody to look over the land. And you know what Pharaoh said? He said, you're very, very wise. <laughs> this guy is wise. He's got a discerning mind. He said, I'm going to set you over my whole land. And I'm going to make you over everything. And I'm going to let you take control out of my people. I'm going to let you take control of my finances. I'm going to let you take control of this. How much more of resting did the Pharaoh do? He was resting in Joseph for everything. And it's so that, that he could just go sit down and relax. He didn't have to think about the problem. That's what Jesus wants to be in your life. He wants to say, I got it. I'll take care of it. I'll take care of it. I'll take care of it. Sometimes we don't want Jesus. I can take care of this myself. Jesus can take care of it. Amen? Because he's already taken care of it at the cross. We took care of every problem at the cross. It's us to... It's up to us to hear the gospel so that we can possess our possessions so we can reign in life. Amen? That's what, that's what Pharaoh was doing right here. In my eyes, I see Pharaoh and Jesus. I mean, this is like me and Jesus. I need him to take over my, my, my kingdom. Take over this. I can't do it. But you can. See that? This is what really riled me, okay? Was, was the increase. It, was, it, was, it wasn't this. It was actually a couple chapters later. If you actually go to chapter 46, actually 47, chapter 47, you're about to hear something that really wowed me. This really wowed me because it's, I just saw how much God's grace really, it really worked, I mean, in, in his life. Let's see, it says, And Joseph gathered up all the money that was found in the land of Egypt and in the land of Canaan for the grain which they brought. And Joseph brought the money into Pharaoh's house. That's Genesis 47, 14. What is that? What are you saying, guys? What are you saying? What is he saying online? What is, what is he saying? He's, he just said that he brought all the money in Egypt and in Canaan. All the money. I'm talking there's no money left in either or two of these places. All the money came into Pharaoh's house. How many things has God been bringing to your life when you let Jesus take over? Wow. All things are going to be met. All your needs are going to be met. He's going to be supply. Wow. It was so much that, you know what? That it was still famine. So when the money failed in Egypt and in the land of Canaan, all the Egyptians came to Joseph and said, Give us bread, or why should we die? For the money has failed. 
So Jesus is giving out bread and getting in return money. And it's all because of for Pharaoh. What is the Lord doing in our lives every day? When you let the Spirit lead you. Whenever you go out in the supermarket and you're talking to somebody, Jesus, you know, he's like, I heard that guy, I heard, I heard this, this really cool thing the Lord was talking about, about these numbers, and you just share it with somebody. You know what Jesus has just done? He just gave bread to somebody. Three. Because you're hearing. He's going to supply after that. He's going to keep on supplying, supplying. Just like Joseph was giving bread and getting everything in return for Pharaoh. Well, that's a lot of supply. You know what? It was so much supply that they, he got all the oxen. I don't really know anything about oxen. I mean, I'm not a farmer. But I mean, all the oxen. After that, all the Egyptians, they started giving all their land to the Pharaoh just for bread. You can take our land for until the Pharaoh's house, he was so mighty, he had everything he wanted. Everything. Was it because of the Pharaoh's obedience? No. Was it because of the Pharaoh's wisdom? No. Because it was, was it because of the Pharaoh's effort? No. It's because of Joseph. And Joseph is a picture of Jesus. When Jesus is taking care of it, he's going to supply all your needs. Amen? Because he's already supplied him to the cross. Because he, he had Jesus. Amen? Because he had Jesus taking care of it. Because mm -hmm. he was resting in Jesus. Mm -hmm. Wow. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that, isn't that great? I never saw that before. I actually, the Lord showed me that last night. And it really wowed me. I was like, wow, Lord. You are amazing. You're, sh wow, you're bringing in some grace here. Some amazing grace. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's, let's look at Romans. One more verse, you know. I, I feel like, you know, it's going to be short and sweet, but I feel like it's, um, I don't know, we just went back to the basics today. I feel like it was going to be a deep message for men. The Lord just brought it back down for me. It really did. Let's go to um, Romans 5, verse 17. Romans 5, verse 17 says, For if by one man's offense death reigned through the one, much more those who receive an abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one, Jesus Christ. What are they receiving here, guys? Uh, abundance of grace. How do you receive abundance of grace? Faith. Faith. How does faith come? Here. Hearing. Yes, that's right. That's right. Ding, 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 ding. We got a winner right here. Faith <laughs> comes by hearing. Romans 10, 17. When you hear faith, whoo, it's coming in. It says in Galatians that how, did, how, do God, how does God work miracles? By the works of the law or the hearing of faith? Hearing of faith. Because Abraham believed it was accounted to him for righteousness. And the power of God into salvation. God is. That that's there. right. So God tear. So yeah. tear. So tear. That's right. You know. Yeah, that so, one, uh, to save. Is the gospel of Christ. The Amen. The gospel of Christ. So it seems like hearing activates the abundance of grace coming into your life. Hearing activates it. What are we hearing about? We're hearing about it's all about what he did, not what I have to do. It's all about his obedience, not mine. It's all about him. He, I'm justified according to faith, not because of according to my works. Oh, um, no. But now, Zach, that sounds too good to be true. Now do I, oh, just because you gave me that, now I have to try to live right, right? No, 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 no. Living right comes out of a fruit of believing right. Do you know who you are? Do you know who you are? You're righteous, you're loved, and you're the son of the most high God. You're holy, you're blameless. That's who you are. Never be led by your, but by your performance. Be led by your standing. You're standing in grace ground. You're standing in favor of Christ. You're standing in the, in the blamelessness of Christ. You're standing in the, in the well-pleasing sight of God's love on your life. He'll never be mad at you. Amen. That's how he sees you. That's how he wants you. Wow. Never, you, judge, you don't judge your performance. You judge your performance by your standing. You know, not the other way around. You know, it's not, I'm standing in Christ. So what, you know, you think, why, why are these things happening? You know, it's not, you don't, it doesn't change, you don't change your obedience. Christ does when you believe right. Right believing leads to right living. I truly believe that. I really do. It comes out as a fruit and not the root. Church always wants you to say, you need to do this, you need to do that, you need to do this, you need to do that, you need to come, you need to come to Bible study. If you don't come, you're not going to be in good graces with God anymore. I'm sorry. It's going to take a lot of hard work to get back up here. It's true. I mean, oh, I, right? No. It, that's it, so many places. It, is that not what I learned my whole life? Oh, man, you did not come up and show up on Wednesday. Oh, yeah. Where, Ooh, where were you last Wednesday, man? Where were you? You didn't give us a time today. <laughs> God's not too happy with you. 
No, 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 no. I don't know if we're reading the same Bible. Mine says Holy Bible. Maybe there's this non-Holy Bible. I don't understand yeah, where it comes from. Lies, bro. Where does it come from? You know, it's a, and wherever it says by one man's offense, yeah, it doesn't make sense. If you read Romans that by one man's offense, it's all talking about his offense and about the, the, the wrong disobedience. We're, it's because of his obedience that we're righteous. Many will be made righteous. It's amazing. Amen? I don't understand. I, don't, I just don't get it sometimes. You know, but the gospel needs to be preached. It's the gospel of grace. And what is grace? What is grace? Grace is unearned, unmerited, undeserved favor from God. Amen? It's unmerited favor. Amen? You don't deserve it. That's why God's giving it to you. Amen? It's unmerited. It's not. It's because you don't deserve it. It's because you can't do it yourself. It's because you can't live right that God's given you the right living amen, in your life. Jesus said, I, I have come that they may have life and have it more abundantly. He did not say, I have come that they may have a uh, life and then they have to try to work. No. Amen. That's not Jesus I know. Jesus I know says, you know what? He supplied everyone's need. It doesn't matter if they were in church or in, out of church. He went, he went around and there was a guy on the ground. He said, you need something? He said, Lord, if you're willing, will you help me? Jesus said, I'm willing. That's, and Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's always willing to heal you. He's always willing to help you. He's always willing to supply anything for your life. That's the Jesus I know. Amen? Amen. And it's, things don't come by your obedience. They come because of his obedience at the cross. Amen? 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 Amen. Wow. Why do they got it backwards? Why do they think? Why, why do they think this way? What, are we just all just like, get a rock dropped on our heads? What, what's going on? <laughs> I'm serious. I, I really don't understand that. They're, the Bible says so many good things, and the, you know what? It's, a, it's all about him, him, him. How does it get back to us? It's the devil's way. He wants us to look down. So when we look down, we can't inherit who we are. We can't see who we are because we're looking at ourselves. When you see Christ, it's already finished. He's already given you everything. He wants you to inherit. He wants you to be a joint heir with him. Amen? Mm -hmm. I talked about this on church, you know. If you're a joint heir with Christ, just think about this. You're just married into wealthiness. You're just married into a million-dollar family. Amen? Mm -hmm. If you marry into a million-dollar family, you're not going to say, Honey, can I drive the car today? Honey, can I use some money in the bank today? No, you're a joint heir. Everything that they have is yours. They, I'm pretty sure they say that in the vows. Now you are separated to life till death. Anything that they have is yours. That's what Jesus said. You're now a joint heir with him. You're in the family. What I, whatever he has, you can have it. Because he's already given it to you. Take it. He's saying take it. Pick it up. Pick it up. Pick it up. Sometimes we don't pick it up. Why? I don't know. Because, we, because you know what? It comes by hearing. You've got to see Jesus. He already finished it. Amen? Something about that. Let's go to John. Actually, something's coming right back into my mind, and it's amazing. John chapter 19. Actually, John chapter 21. Sorry. John oh, chapter 21. This story right here. I love this story. This amazing story. It's actually um, after. It's post-cross. So it's after the cross. And now Jesus is, um, you know, he's always coming back to his disciples and, you know, He's got, he's, you know, he's got those holes in his hands, and you know, because peace have Christ. That's the, the fine receipt right there. And what he said is, he, okay, so what's happening in, in John 21? So it's basically, Peter says, I'm going fishing. He said, I'm getting ready to go fishing. The disciples are like, we're going with you. He said, all right, let's go. I don't know why they always go fish at night. I think Peter would learn by now. You need to fish during the daytime. <laughs> That's a whole other message, but... Anyway, so let's read um, verse uh, 3. Simon Peter said to them, I'm going fishing. And they said to him, we are going with you also. And they went out and immediately got into the boat. And, they, and that night they caught nothing. And when, when the morning, and when, but when the morning had now come, Jesus stood on the shore. Yet the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Then Jesus said to them, children, have you any food? And they answered him, No. 
And he said, cast out the net onto the right side of the boat, and you will find some. So they cast it onto the right side. So Jesus is right there, and he's saying, cast it over, cast it on the right side. All right? He said, you know, so, so they cast it now on the right side, and they were not able to draw it in because of the multitude of fish. Who wants to read the next verse for me? Chapter seven, verse 7. Who wants to read it? I'll do it. Read it, Yeah, Come on, guys. Therefore, that disciple uh, whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. Right there. Stop it right there. Who is the disciple whom Jesus loved? Who is this guy? John. 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 Oh, Johnny boy. Oh, Johnny boy. Ooh. Okay. What does John's name mean in the Greek? You know? I'm not sure. It means God's grace. That's what his name means. Okay, so let's think about this for a second. Let's just hold up. Let's just hold the horses. Jesus said, cast it on the right side of the boat. What is Jesus doing? You know, I, you're, when you're hearing the words of Christ, because that's what faith is. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the words of Jesus Christ. That's what it means. That's Romans 10, 17. He heard. And John, God's grace. What did he say? It is the Lord. And Peter heard. It is the Lord. Now when Peter Simon heard it, he put on his outer garment and he plunged it into the sea. Peter heard grace. You see this? Okay. So you, if, you, if you're not understanding, just think about this. When you're hearing the gospel, when, when grace is being preached, who is it going to be preached about? Jesus, the Lord. And Peter heard it. And you know what, what was his reaction? Let's read the next verse. And he plunged into the sea. Alright? But the other disciples came on the boat. Jesus was so excited to see Jesus. He was excited. This was something fresh. This was like, oh my gosh, David is a picture of Jesus. It was something exciting that he was like, I gotta go to Jesus. I gotta jump out of this boat. He jumped. He was excited. He went flying towards Jesus. I'm pretty sure this is the same Peter who denied Jesus three times. He was very excited to see him. I mean, wow. Same guy. A couple days ago, he was already going... I never knew you, but he was drawn close to Jesus. Something about grace, guys. When you're hearing, just like the first Peter, when you're hearing grace, you see a new revelation of Jesus Christ, grace is being brought to you. Okay? So what happened? They caught a hundred, how much fish? It said a multitude. Let's get down. But the, but the other disciples came in the little boat, for they were far, not far from land, and they were dragging the fish. And then as soon as they had come, they saw fire, coals, and fish laid on it. And Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish which you have caught. Which, who caught? Who caught them? <laughs> who, who, who provided? Who provided the, the fish? Jesus. But who did he say caught them? Them. them. Oh, wow, he's giving them credit for using grace he supplied. He's saying, oh, bring me some of the fish, fish you caught. Jesus gives the increase, but he says, it. look, good job. You did it. Did you do anything? No. I heard. That's what he did. They, what did they do? They heard. They heard. And grace came. Wow. They heard Jesus. Grace came with fish. It said large fish. Let, keep reading. Let's read the next verse. And Jesus said, Sing, Bring some of the fish that which you have caught. And Simon Peter went and dragged the net to land, full of large fish. Can you read that for me right there? 11? Let's see. Somebody read 11. Simon Peter went up and dragged a net to land full of large fish, 153. And although there were so many, the net was not broken. That's what I like to hear. Amen. What happened in Luke 5, Luke chapter 5? Peter caught fish. It was enough to fill two boats. Since the net was breaking, this time when God's grace had come, what happened? The net wouldn't break. And it, what did it say right here? That, that they were struggling to get the fish to shore. Peter, one man, pulled the entire fish all the way to Jesus. Being with Jesus. Jesus makes everything strong. Do you see that? Just being in the presence of Jesus. His strength was super abounding multiplied because of grace. I felt, I felt, I felt stronger. He had the same strength that he could go slay a giant. It came from Christ. Whenever you're seeing, oh, Jesus is with me today. You know what? Today... It's going to be a good day because Jesus is with me. Amen? You start showing you some revelations. Strength, just grace comes on you. It's all kind of strength. It's like, wow. And the net, net did not break. It said 153 large fish. Do you know something about 153? 
If you add one plus two plus three plus four plus five plus three, all that all the way until you get to 17, it adds up to 153. Did you know that? Mm -hmm. Wow, 17, victory over all evil because of grace, because of Jesus. Add it up. One. You add one plus two plus three plus four. Keep going all the way to get to 17. Do it in your calculator. 153 is the result. Every number in the Bible has a meaning. Isn't that amazing? Victory over all evil because of the cross. When you're hearing the message of the cross, the power of God is resting upon you through grace. The grace is coming to you. The power of God. that You'll have that power to carry a net full of 153 large fish that only a boat could tow. One man did because of Jesus. Isn't that amazing? You ever see that before? I didn't ever know that. I never knew that. Wow. Do you know want to know something else about 153? This is really cool. What is something that Jesus was always saying to everyone wherever he was on land? Or wherever he, he said that a lot. He said, you know, I am God. Right? Mm -hmm. I am God is, um, is three words. Every word has a numeric value. So he would have said in the Hebrew, Ani Ha Elohim. I am God. Ani. Numeric value, if you add up the ones, it's Aleph, which is 1. Nun, which is 50. Yud, which is 10. So you get 61. Okay? Just hold that number. Write that down for me. Write it down. 61. Ani. Ani is I. That's in Hebrew. Ani is an I. It's Aleph, Nun, Yud. Okay? So you got 1 plus 5, 50 plus 10. Because 10, the numeric value for Yud is 10. Ha is am in the Hebrew. Am, ha is am. It's he, it's, uh, it's he aleph. Okay? He aleph, which is five plus one. So you got six. For the second letter, you got six. What was the first letter again? How much did you have? You had 61, 61. plus six. Now you got Elohim. Elohim is aleph, lamed, he, yud, mem. It's 1 plus 30 plus 5 plus 10 plus another plus 40. You get 86. Add up, write for me, 61 plus 6 plus 86. You get 150, 153. Ani ha Elohim. Isn't that amazing? I am God. 153. Wow. Isn't that amazing? Every number has a meaning, guys. Every number in the Bible. And you know what? It's the glory of God to conceal the matter. He concealed it. But it's the glory of kings to search it out. And you can only search it out with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will guide you. When you hear the gospel, he will guide you to find these things. These amazing things that are in the Bible. It's amazing. Did you know that? Who is the disciple whom Jesus loved? Who is that again? That was John, right? That's John. You know that the disciple whom Jesus loved is mentioned five times in the gospel of John. What's the number of grace? Five. Five is the number of grace. Isn't that amazing? Five. Five times it says the disciple whom Jesus loved. Numbers have meanings. It's amazing. These little secrets are to reveal Christ in the scriptures. It's a fresh. It's fresh when you see something like that. Ani ha Elohim. Come on. 153. Amen. Wow. <laughs> One plus two plus three. 17. Wow. Victory over all evil because of Christ. Amen. Jesus will have victory in your life over everything. Amen? Everything. 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 What year is it right now? 2017. Mm -hmm. That's right. What, what, you know what? But you, it is 2017. But you know what? Actually, the Hebrew calendar says it's 5,777. That's the year? That's the year right now, according to the Hebrew calendar. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of good numbers right there. Yeah. That's grace. That's rest. 5,777. This, that's this year, according to the Hebrew calendar. And it's also the year of Jubilee. It's year, the year to rest. The rest of all rests. Isn't that amazing? Mm -hmm. A lot of good things happen this year. A lot of good yeah, things have happened this year. Wow. You guys like all these numbers. I'm sure you guys are pretty, your minds are twirling. You're like, uh, you're about to go, you're going to be, you're going to start, go, go start counting numbers. Oh man, we're going to count all this stuff up. Amen. But this is just Bible numerics, by the way. You know, don't live your life by not staying in the, the room six, okay? Don't, don't live your life by numbers. This is, this is to reveal God's goodness. This is to reveal Jesus in numbers. Uh, you know, that's something that the Lord loves to do. He, God is a God of numbers. He loves showing himself throughout numbers. So, if you didn't understand 
Ani Ha Elohim, I am God. The numeric value of three, those three words is 153. The same amount of fish that they caught. It's amazing. It's amazing. I guess um, the last thing I want to say is Romans. This is um, something that really just the Lord was kind of just kind of tugging at my heart right now just to talk about. About salvation again. You know, what's, what's the difference? In, you know, there's, there's a difference between salvation that's forever and there's salvation that's right now. It's the word soteria, which means deliverance from all temporal danger. Okay? Now, read, go, let's go right here. It says, it says, For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. What is confession? Do you know? What is confession? The Greek word is actually homologio. What do you think confession is? So, this first ask. Confession is speaking it. Like, you know, you believe it, so you speak it. That's right. That's right. You're right. But, 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 I mean, what would you think about in this context? Most people are going to say, oh, this is confession, so i got to confess my sin, so I'm saved. So actually, the word confession here is homologio, to agree with God. You're agreeing with God. What are we agreeing with God with? That I'm righteous because of Jesus. No, no. I'm the righteousness of God no, no. in Christ. Amen. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I am, I am justified because of Jesus, not because of my works. I'm blessed because of his obedience, not because of mine. Amen? Yep. Amen. Amen. And it says, you know what, with the heart one believes. With, the, with confession, it's made to salvation. The word right, actually, the, the verse right before that, it says, it, it first comes in your mouth, then in your heart, then in your mouth. It's like, it's like you've got to speak something so you believe it, so you can speak it again out of a fruit. I mean, have you ever woken up every morning and you're like, man, I don't feel too righteous. I don't, know, I don't know what Zach's talking about, man. I don't feel too good. I feel pretty crappy. I don't feel good. I don't feel healed. I don't feel blessed. Look away from those but, things. But you know what? We're not led according to our feelings. We're led according to our standing that's in Christ, that's on grace. Amen? You may feel a certain way. This says otherwise. Your feelings are, are, are not what we're led by. A lot of people say, I, if I feel good, I'll feel good in my life. Oh, no. You're not led according to that. You're led according to this. This is the Word of God. This is what tells you who you are. This is what, how you are led. It says you're righteous apart from works. It says you're blessed apart from works. I'm going to believe this. It amen. says, amen, amen. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you guys. Thank you guys for this. Just remember... Victory over all evil. Jesus did it all at the cross. And we're going to have communion right quick. Thanks for reminding me, by the way. Communion. Because his body was broken for us at the cross. He took every single pain, every single worry, every single fear, every single judgment, every single thing that we feel, he felt it on him. So that you don't have to feel it right now. You just have to say, oof, Jesus, you took it. Thank you, Jesus, for you took it. Because I couldn't take it. Thank you, Jesus, that you were, you were the one that did it. It's finished. Thank you, Jesus, for your body that was broken for me. Amen. The cup is blood that covered us. His blood is the blood that, you know what? Because of his blood, the judgment passed over us. It wasn't because of our obedience. It wasn't because of our performance. It was because of his performance. It was because of his obedience. It was because he loved us. And he laid down his life for us. Amen. And he wanted us to have, be redeemed from every curse. Thank you, Jesus, for your redemption. <laughs> All right. Thank you, guys, for coming. And be blessed. Be blessed. Remember who you are. Keep on hearing. Keep on hearing great sermons like Eric Skidmore, the Grace Center in Houston. Keep on hearing Joseph Prince. You've been hearing people like Jeremiah Johnson. And let the Lord just lead you into all good things. All right, bye.